Gata Quintet is a, um, a slightly unusual group, as its instrumentation, its grouping, is based on the original Metzola Nuevo Tango Quintet. It features uh, accordion, violin, uh, electric guitar, piano and double bass. It's almost as if, if our quintet was designed on many levels to play Piazzolla because um, we are a lot like his original quintet uh, in the sense that the musicians that, that formed uh, his quintet didn't just have one kind of musical background. They had various different backgrounds and we were very fortunate to have uh, James who plays the bass who's a jazz musician. I, I remember being um, a bit sceptical about joining the group at first, only because I was already playing in quite a few different jazz groups and I knew with this, this particular music there would be a lot of rehearsal time involved. Coming from a jazz background, I was very rhythmically prepared for this music. As a jazz musician I was doing sort of nearly all pizzicato playing really, but I would studied classical bass as well previously, I just hadn't been performing in that regard, so Piazzolla's music really lets me use both those sides to my playing at once really. Uh, at the same time uh, we're very fortunate to have Givaret, who plays the accordion, um, who also has some experience in uh, in world music and, and, and Balkan pieces. Balkan music has helped in a way that I played uh, something, a uh, type of music which is uh, free and I found a lot of similarities in Piazzolla's music for instance. Balkan traditional music was uh, present obviously in my life always. You know, in uh, Serbia, if you play an accordion, you can't play traditional piece of music. They don't take it seriously, you know. <laughs> so you, you have to know. And Balkan traditional music, it's very challenging in terms of playing and very sophisticated in many ways. Antonis, I only knew him as a, as a classical guitarist. <laughs> He told me that, in, that when he was uh, when he was younger, when he was a teenager, he played electric guitar, and he knew quite a bit about what the differences are, playing style. I knew about the guys. I, I knew they were playing, and they had in, interest in me. But I was trying to postpone it, avoid it, and. Uh, just to, to save some time, but I was always, whenever I was saying no to them, you know, I was going back home later thinking, oh gosh, that was a mistake, you know. Piazzolla was interested in the guitar, he's written a lot of, of, of music for it. And of course he used the guitar as a medium in his, in his quintet. The only difference is that the solo and duet classical music he wrote, it was written for, for the classical guitar, whereas in the quintet formation, you you see the electric guitar. Um, Anahit is uh, from Armenia. She's a pianist. She's a, a true artist, a, uh, an exceptional player. When I heard uh, the recording of Piazzolla himself playing, I just had a feeling that this is one of a very rare performances that who uh, who has an incredible ability to. Um, pass the message in the most uh, close, personal and direct way. Anastasius, he played on some concerts I attended and it was really uh, uh, something that uh, I immediately felt that will work out very well. She stopped me in, in one of the corridors and said, would you like to play some Piazzolla pieces? And she had, she actually already had the music in, in her hand. And I just, I just thought, I mean, half the things here, are, you know, are not exactly written. How am I going to do it? But fortunately, uh, she was uh, very convincing, and um, we had a few rehearsals uh, and did a concert. And after the concert, uh, we decided to form a permanent quintet.
Pizzola. Um, he was born in 1921 in Argentina and uh, his family emigrated to the United States when he was very young. And he grew up in New York uh, and was exposed to both classical music and jazz. In uh, Piazzolla's music, he fantastically absolutely uses the form of a fugue where he gives to each instrument its liberty and its voice. And he gives the freedom and he puts them on equal kind of level. You have three, three instruments in the group capable of playing chords, which is very unusual. I mean, the accordion is, off, is mainly used just as a melodic instrument in this, in this group. But you have piano and guitar that are both covering that territory, and so they can both switch roles a lot to a great extent. And then, and then you have these instruments that take on melodic roles when they're in the forefront, but then they're always doing something else, like a, some counterpoint or something percussive at another point in the music. So everyone's always involved, but it's in different ways all the time. One thing that's very um, striking about this music is you have this, these very driving tango rhythms that's a, a big part of the music, but then you also have these rubato sections, which are just as important. Pizzola, um, he put all his uh, efforts into, into composing this new style of music which has uh, classical uh, forms and composition techniques uh, and also contains uh, jazz elements in it and is, everything is supported by the tango uh, rhythm and pulse and, and feel and uh, he called this new tango or nuevo tango. It is very classical because of the structure, because of the message it has inside. All instruments have that kind of importance and uh, freedom through improvisation, through the form of fugue also. It's the most uh, impressive part of this music is an incredible balance he, as a composer, as a musician, could find in creating those fantastic pieces. As a performer, you are a messenger of something which is coded uh, by a composer and you need to be extremely close to the idea and you have to just try to decode whatever is held then there with, with these, the sounds and everything. We apply the, the, the things that we learnt about performance practice and, uh, and, and how to uh, research uh, the composer and, and the piece and, uh, and read the score and, and get as much information as possible in order to play uh, in the way that um, you hope the, the composer wanted you to play his music. With Piazzolla that's what I, I'm trying to do was to actually, uh, apart from treating with respect the, the music, to put something mine inside, as well as trying to, to, to bring out the sounds that he intended. There's a certain amount of freedom which, which someone, I think, needs to, to dare. You really just have to, to feel where things will happen as an ensemble. So, in terms of listening to melodies, following the melodies, and understanding where harmony should fall in relation to that. And um, that's been a real eye-opener for me. Pizzola, you have to adapt your technique and your approach in order to make uh, it sound like the real thing. You have to become a bit of a chameleon uh, in order to really express his, his ideas. I think, I think Piazzola's music has affected um, my approach to the instrument in general. It's opened me up to some new sounds that are available. Um, percussive sounds from the instrument, different ways to use the bow. And there's some very specific things in terms of glisses, in terms of um, the way the front of the note is really accented. 
just a, um, a specific to this music, I think. I was looking at, at, at a part and I saw this bit that said Lika, which I didn't exactly know how that sound was, was being created. Then I, I discovered that you had to actually play behind the bridge of the violin, which is something that you don't usually do. You have to play in front of the bridge of the violin because uh, that's where the sound comes from. If you, if you play behind the bridge, it's, the, the, the string is so tense and so short that you basically get a scratching sound. I had to find ways of actually hitting the guitar uh, around the pickup so that it produced sound or make, you know, muting the strings and creating these bongo sounds, which of course piatola musicians use as well. It's uh, sometimes confusing. You don't, you don't know where these weird sounds are coming from and unless you really observe, you know, you don't know whether it's that percussion, you know, from from the violin or the guitar or, or the piano yeah. and, and it took a long time to actually figure that out. Apart from exploring and going deep into this music and seeing the, you know, how it should be done and the effects and all this, it's uh, really important to feel this music. The fact that we all have something to say, something in common maybe, you know, the love of, of that, for, for that music is, is important. It is always a great joy to perform. I cannot uh, say really which one was the best one because for me each performance gives me personally that opportunity to uh, uh, stretch in my arm and touch the heart of everyone who sits there. You know? And it's a, an incredible uh, possibility that is given by Piazzolla. in a slightly different manner and every time we play it's, it's different and it is incredible how the whole energy between us uh, affects the audience. We never get tired of playing the music because there's always something else we can move on to, something else we can explore a new challenge. We want to progress and go forward as a group. performing really and uh, do what you do the best. Pizzolo's music is so so interesting and, and, and wonderful and exciting to play that you want to do your best to get one more concert because you just can't stop playing.